Have you ever wondered what percentages really are and how they work? Well, let's unravel this mathematical mystery together. A percentage, in its simplest form, is a way of expressing a number as a fraction of 100. Why is this important, you might ask? Well, percentages are everywhere around us. When we talk about sales discounts, interest rates, or even sports statistics, we're using percentages. They help us understand proportions in a universal way, because no matter where you are in the world, 50% is always half, and 25% is always a quarter. Percentages also allow us to make meaningful comparisons. For instance, if a store offers a 20% discount, we instantly know we're saving a fifth of the original price. So in essence, a percentage is a way of expressing a number as a fraction of 100. Stick around as we delve deeper into this fascinating world of percentages. So, how do we convert a number into a percentage? Well, the process is quite simple and straightforward. You see, percentages are essentially a way to express a number as a fraction of 100. That's right, when you say 50%, you're essentially saying 50 out of 100. Let's illustrate this with a simple example. Suppose you have four apples out of a total of 20. How would you express this as a percentage? First, you need to divide the part by the whole. In this case, the part is the four apples and the whole is the total number of apples, which is 20. So you divide four by 20. The result of this division is 0.2, or in fraction form, 2 tenths. Now this fraction is the proportion of the part to the whole, but we want to express this proportion as a percentage, which is a fraction of 100. So, we multiply the result of our division by 100. When you multiply 2 tenths by 100, you get 20. So, 4 apples out of 20 is equal to 20%. You've just converted a number into a percentage. Of course, not all numbers will divide as neatly as this example. When that happens, don't be afraid to round to the nearest whole number or even to the nearest decimal point if you need more precision. It's also worth noting that percentages can be greater than 100. If you have 200 apples out of a total of 100, that's 200%. In conclusion, converting numbers to percentages is a matter of finding the proportion of the part to the whole and then expressing that proportion as a fraction of 100. So the next time you see a number and wonder how it would look as a percentage, just remember these steps. Divide the part by the whole, then multiply the result by 100. Remember, to find the percentage, you divide the part by the whole and then multiply by 100. Now, what if we have a percentage and need to find the original number? Let's delve into this intriguing mathematical puzzle. Imagine you're given a percentage, say 30%, and you know it's 30% of a certain number, but that number is missing. How do we go about finding it? Let's break it down. First, it's important to understand what a percentage is. A percentage is just another way of expressing a fraction with a denominator of 100. So, when we say 30%, we're essentially saying 30 out of 100. Now let's move on to the method of finding the missing number. Let's say we know that 30% of a number is 60. We can represent that as an equation. 30% of x equals 60. In mathematical terms, that's 0.30x equals sine 60. To solve for x, we need to isolate it. So, we'll divide both sides of the equation by 0.30. That gives us x equals 60 divided 0, 30, which equals 200. So, the original number was 200. Let's try another example for clarity. If 75% of a number is 150, what's the number? Again, we set up our equation. 0.75x equals sine 150. Solving for x, we find x equals 150 divided 0. 75, which equals 200. These examples show us that to find a missing number from a given percentage, we need to divide the known result by the percentage, expressed as a decimal. This is the key to unlocking any percentage problem where the original number is unknown. Remember, percentages are simply fractions with a denominator of 100. They're a tool to compare and understand proportions. Just like any other mathematical tool, they become easier to manage the more you practice with them. So the next time you're faced with a missing number and a known percentage, don't fret. Just divide the known result by the percentage, expressed as a decimal, and the mystery will be solved. By multiplying the total by the percentage and dividing by 100, we can find the original number. 
Did you know that we can also use percentages as operators? Yes, percentages are not just static numbers. They can also be dynamic operators that influence and manipulate other numbers. Let's dive into an example to clarify this concept. Suppose you have a sum of money, say £100, and you want to increase it by 20%. The percentage here is acting as an operator, modifying the original sum. So, how do we do that? You multiply your original sum, which is £100, by the percentage increase, which is 20%, or in decimal form, 0.2. The result is £20. This is the increase. You then add it to your original sum. So, 100 plus 20 gives us a total of 120 pounds. Sounds simple, right? Let's take another example to solidify your understanding. Suppose there's a sale at your favorite store and all items are marked down by 15%. You've been eyeing a jacket that originally costs 80 pounds. How much would you need to pay now? We use the percentage as an operator again, but this time it's reducing the cost. Multiply the original price by the percentage decrease which is 15% or 0.15. That gives us 12 pounds. Subtract this from the original price and you get your final price, 68 pounds. These examples highlight how percentages can be used as operators, either increasing or decreasing a number. This concept is widely applied in our everyday life, from calculating tips at a restaurant, figuring out discounts during sales, to determining how much you've earned from your investments Percentage as an operator is a powerful tool that can help us comprehend and manipulate numbers in a more tangible and meaningful way. It's not just about knowing what percentage is, it's about understanding how it works and how to use it to our advantage. Using percentages as operators can give us a new perspective on how numbers interact. So the next time you come across percentages, remember they are not just numbers. They are operators ready to work their magic on other numbers. Now that we've covered the basics, let's put your knowledge to the test. First up, we have a scenario for you. Imagine you're at a store and you see a shirt that you like. The original price is £50, but it's on sale for 15% off. How much would you pay for that shirt after the discount? Moving on to our second question. You've been tasked with organising a charity event and you've received 80 donations. If 25% of these donations are from a single donor, how many donations did that donor make? Our third question involves fractions. If you have a pizza that's been sliced into eight pieces and you've eaten 25% of it, how many slices have you eaten? Let's dive into the fourth question. Your teacher gives you a test with 20 questions. If you've answered 16 of them correctly, what is your percentage score? And finally, our fifth question. You're saving up for a holiday and you've managed to put aside 300 pounds so far. If this is 75% of your total savings goal, how much are you planning to save in total? Take a moment to solve these questions. Think about the concepts we've discussed and how they apply to each scenario. Remember, the key to understanding percentages is practice. The more you work with percentages, the more intuitive they will become. These questions are designed to test your understanding of percentages in different contexts, from shopping discounts to test scores. They'll help you see how percentages are a part of everyday life and how understanding them can be incredibly useful. So take your time and work through these problems at your own pace. Don't worry if you can't solve them all right away. The important thing is to keep trying and to learn from your mistakes. Take your time to solve these questions. We'll discuss the answers in the next scene. Ready to check your answers? Let's dive right in. For question one, we found 20% of 50, which is 10. Remember, when finding a percentage of a number, you simply multiply the number by the percentage divided by 100. Question two asked for the missing fraction in the equation what over 50 equals 20%. To solve this, we multiplied 50 by 20%, once again giving us 10. In question three, we used percentage as an operator. We increased 20 by 15%, resulting in 23. For questions 4 and 5, we decreased numbers by a certain percentage. In both cases, we multiplied the original number by 1 minus the percentage, giving us the final answers. And that's all there is to percentages. Just remember, they're simply fractions of 100, and you'll be able to handle any percentage problem that comes your way.